we're fortunate to have um, you know our uh, another federal highways representative here to talk to us from the resource center. Jason has taken over as one of the directors our re our resource uh, ex officio for the for the you know partnership here, and uh, he's got an excellent topic. There's a lot of uh, suggested talking points here, and uh, so I'm looking forward to his presentation. But Jason Dietz, uh, Federal Highways Resource Center, and uh, one of our counterparts. Well, we're going to talk a little bit about the performance measures, and as all you've known, these are some of the things coming out of Federal Highway. Um, going through the states, going through rulemaking process, and I'm going to talk a little bit about them. And also talk a little bit about the funding process. But first, I want to talk about the National Highway System. We all know the National Highway System. That really is the backbone of our interstate system. It incorporates a lot of our roadways. And as you can see down there, we only have 5.4% of the U.S. mileage is on the National Highway System. So very low amount. However, 97% of that is on truck usage and freight. So that's where we play a major role in that. As we continue, um, we have to look at our border crossings. 53% of our border crossings come from this interstate system. And about 98% 98 98 of that values the truck trade of Canada and Mexico. As well as we want to look at the significance in the future in 2050 is an estimate of passenger and freight transportation demands for the national highway system will increase 250 percent. So that's quite a lot. So that's why there's such a push for making sure we're looking at our performance measures of our national highway system. With that said, we collect uh, our HPMS data around the country. Each year, our states provide that information to our, our headquarters office, and we are able to calculate what our pavement performance is doing. As you can see here, 31% has been the percentage of our national highway system between six to 10 years. We would hope it would be a little further along than that, maybe 10 to 15, 11 to 15 or 16 or 20, but it's right in there in the six and 10%. And this data comes from our 2012 data. It's always a couple years behind. And as you can see, the flexible payment is 69% and so forth, so forth. Next, we want to talk about the funding in 2014. As you can see, the majority of these funds for resurfacing, rehabilitation, reconstruction, or for those like to say the three R prospects in preservation and preventing and maintenance. The importance of preservation and improvement on the national highway system. We need to improve, and you guys all know this, you've heard this before, we need to improve our national highway system through risk-based asset management approach to keep our American infrastructure safer, increase the mobility, improve the U.S. economy, and improve the U.S. competition in world trade. Also, in addition, we want to implement these MAP21 performance measures to focus on federal transportation investments of the national highway system, leading to improved pavement condition in the roadways. And as you can see here, here's the predominant uh, percentage of rehabilitation, reconstruction, and pavement preservation that takes on most of this part of this pie. My outline, what I'm going to talk about today, is the evolving federal aid program. We're looking at, we're going to be looking at the core programs and the funding. We're going to look at the performance elements, the challenge and the opportunities that the states are going through. We're going to look at the national goals for these performance measures, and then ways to measure for accessing our roadway conditions. The evolution of the federal aid program started back in 1956. And how I can remember that, it's my, my father's favorite type of vehicle, and I suppose some of your father's as well. We started back in 1956 with the, federal, the highway federal aid highway program. And through there, we built our program. We did our construction, we did our design, we did all the things that we needed to do to get this infrastructure moving across the country. Then came along Ice-T, where we basically, the Federal Highway looked more into the process reviews, making sure that the MPOs and the, and the state programs were all being quantified by certain aspects. Then came MAP-21, now we're looking at the outcomes of performance. 
Currently, with our HPMS data, this is the information that we get every year. We know that we have a pavement condition of the National Highway System of well, right here. Our, our target was 58.4, and our actual condition was 59. We met it. Is that enough? It really doesn't tell us much. What about the funding aspect? There's nothing that says anything there. So that's why we have these performance measures that we're requiring that we must meet. Currently, MAP 21 has four core grant programs. 58% is a National Highway Performance Program, 27% is a Surface Transportation Program, and then we have the 6% for Highway Safety and Congestion Mitigation and Air Quality. That's the breakdown. Furthermore, $37.7 billion per year is in the formula funding for the breakouts of the National Highway System, Surface Transportation, and et cetera. And these amounts are in billions in dollars. Furthermore, we have these performance elements. And what I like to say about these performance elements is that these are included of national goals, measures, targets, plans, reports, and accountability. And as you can see here, uh, they, they occur in the different sections in, within the law. There's not one specific section within the MAP 21 that talks about performance measures. It's throughout. Uh, the Federal Highway has tried to organize these requirements in, the, in these six different elements. And as you can see in these graphics, each element feeds into one another. As we talk about national goals, we go into the measures, the targets, the plans, and et cetera. For further information, there's a website where you can go that goes into further detail, which I recommend if you have the time. The challenges and opportunities. We heard the speaker before about the DOTs, the less amount of staff. Well, we also know that we don't want to dictate DOTs on how to do their program. And, not all, and also, we don't want to dictate the contractors to do ways that they can do it. We want to provide consistency and flexibility to these DOTs. We want to find the right balance between national measures, because our measures currently right now are not in place and don't tell the whole story. Next, we want to manage our performance across jurisdictions. We want to make sure the data requirements of the management systems are somewhat in line, because as those that remember our HPMS data, we were getting states collecting data on one side of the road, not on the other side, and it was a mixed mess. So we really weren't getting the whole story that we really needed. We want to linkage this performance measures to investments. And last but not least, we want to advance these technologies for improvement. Next, the principles behind these proposals. We want to minimize the number of measures. We don't want to make there many for the DOTs to have to, have to do. We want to make it so they're within reason for their amount of staff and the amount of time. We want to phase in these requirements. We don't want to do them overnight. We know that they're going to take a couple years, maybe more, to get these measurements to where we need. We want to increase the accountability and transparency. We want to consider the risk. We want to understand the priorities that differ. And we want to recognize the physical constraints. Next, these are the national goals that, were, that came into place. And there's a seven of them. And the one that we're going to be talking about is the second one, an infrastructure condition. We want to maintain a state of good repair. The US DOT performance measures, as you can see, we got highway safety, we got pavement condition, bridge condition. These are all the different types of measures that were uh, that performed. And as you can see, they don't all go on to the national highway system. They also are a part of NHTSA as well as FAA. And they all play a, a major role in contributing the efforts that come out of this. Next, changing circumstances requiring us to embrace performance measures. Since 1996, our gas tax hasn't increased. Along with that, the change of the conditions that we, that we go today, uh, traveling to the store, traveling to where we pick up our goods and our freight has changed over the years. So they, we need all in, need to embrace these new kind of requirements that are coming down, down our perspective and want to get on the boat and try to use these performance measures. The infrastructure condition and the resource constraints, they're different. Our pavement surface conditions have increased. They're not like they used to be. In addition, we heard about public expectations play a major role. 
and performance measure has been proven in other industries as a very valid a way of going about doing your business. Next, as I talked about NHTSA and FTA, here are the different rules that came out, and there were 10 of them. Uh, for the Highway Safety Grant Program for NHTSA, there was one rule that came out. For Federal Highway, there were six, and for FTA, there were three. Furthermore, here's basically a breakdown of the different uh, performance areas that came out. And the next one, that's, that's the main uh, one here, is the pavement and bridge performance measures. This one currently, it's been closed since May 8th of 2015, and it's still, now it's going to the final rule. And this process, as you can see from up above, it may take up to a year from now until it formally gets included. But right now, our Federal Highway Headquarters is basically taking in all the different comments from all the DOTs and the people around the country to where we need to go from this. So this rulemaking process is not a simple one, but we also want to make sure that we get all the DOT's um, questions and answers resolved as much as we can. The one on the bottom I wanted to mention is assistant performance measures. It's projected to be in October of 2015, sometime this month. But for those that don't know much about it, this is measures the, uh, the movement of people in the vehicles, uh, looks at the performance perspective for the users and the planners, design and operators, speed and time of travel, and etc. The impact on the national highway system expansion to the arterials. Next, the proposed pavement measures. As you can see here, it was broken down between good and fair. And for the interstate and non-interstate system, these were the conditions that we broke them down to. With that said, we have the reporting requirements, the baseline performance period reports, two to four years of when uh, Federal Highway is requiring some kind of reports generated about how their payments are doing. We had mid-performance mid period progress reports, two-year condition performance, investigating strategy effectiveness, progress discussion, target adjustments, and so forth. We have full performance pay, uh, period reports, same content as a mid-period report, but responding to four-year targets. And last, the MPOs reports, targets, and progress to the state DOTs for the metropolitan planning organizations. This is one thing that's not required that the MPOs provide us to the Federal Highway, but upon request, um, there might be a time that the, DO, the Federal Highway requested from the DOT. Next, the proposed payment target settings. All state DOTs, MPOs, must establish targets for each performance measure, alignment, and biannual reports. The targets to be established for the entire National Highway System network regardless of ownership. The state DOTs may adjust the four-year targets as performance periods mid paints The state targets are statewide. The state DOTs have the option to set additional urbanized or non-urbanized targets and so forth. The second bullet to the bottom, if state adjusts the targets, any MPO adjustments must occur within 180 days. Furthermore, on the proposed pavement data requirements, pavement data provided to the National Highway's performance system currently is 0.1 for a uniform pavement sections. The matrices that are collected is IRI, cracking, rutting, faulting, and so forth. And it's broken down to good, fair, and poor. And the measures are percent, lane miles, good, and poor. So what can we see from this? We can see better outcomes. We can see improvements in communica uh, communication of the link between investments and results. The increased uh, consistency across the country. Now we're gonna have a system that we know that we're gonna have people collecting similar data and not differences across the country. As well as we're gonna see increased coordination across agencies and jurisdictions for the MPOs. And we're gonna have a greater understanding of what works. Improved measures for performance. There's going to be national and other measures used by agencies. We're going to further define the nation's, the nation's measures himself. And we're going to spur discussions on the value for future areas for performance measure, measurements. And lastly, we're going to improve the data collection, integration, mining, reporting, and visualization. However, we're going to have challenges. We know that we're going to have a national data source, and it's going to be huge. 
and how we're going to collect all that data is going to be very complicated. Consistency of the collection is going to be an issue. The links to the decisions, how they're going to be taken care of, the element level of the data, the advancing technology and the target settings are also going to play major roles. So it's not going to be easy. However, these are the three breakdowns of this, how this data is going to be collected by data requirements, pavers, matrices, and pavement measures. The first one on the data collection and reporting, we're going to have our International Roughness Index, RIRI, and we're also going to have our cracking, rutting, and faulting. The times are going to be one per year. On the IRI for the cracking and rutting, it's going to be two years. And then further information on the extent, if it's one lane, one direction, or et cetera. When are they going to be uh, due? There are certain requirements that each one of them are going to play a major role. Next, uh, for the non-interstate system, we're going to have them as well for the IRI and the cracking. We have certain, uh, certain times now. We requested in June, but the proposed are not going to change. Unlike the ones that we had for the, on the interstate system, we had June, and now it's going to be given a little more time for the states. It's going to give until April. Data quality uh, management. The one thing that comes out of this that needs to be stressed is the importance of this data and where and how this data is being recorded by the states. The FHWA proposes that each state DOT must have data quality management programs for their data required to access their payment condition. The proposed requires state DOTs submit their data quality management programs to FHWA for approval. For further information, there's a website down below where you can go to get further information. Hope you find that useful. In addition to payment condition thresholds, this hasn't changed. Our IRI conditions are 95 for good, for poor greater than 170. You'll see a couple asterisks there, and basically they were broken down for those urban areas. Uh, they were granted a little bit more, uh, no, the higher numbers than they would on the regular roadways, and cracking and rutting and faulting. For further information, down the bottom right-hand corner, there's a section of the of a, a bill, subpart C, that goes into further information. However, for comparisons, we know that IRI, we're going to have a pretty good high confidence level. However, there's going to be differences when it comes to percent cracking. We know that we're going to have low to medium uh, levels and not everybody's going to be consistent. Cracking link is going to be low, rutting is going to be high, and faulting is going to be low. For calculating these measures, here's the process that needs to be included. For good, all three matrices have to be good. For continuous concrete and so forth, the measures as well. For poor, there must be greater than two of these matrices, and et cetera, and for fair, all other combinations. The minimum condition and penalties for these payments. Federal Highway has taken the 5% for this for poor conditions and not to exceed it. However, over time, we're getting, we might be adjusting this, but for now, it looks like the measure that we're going to be using. Here's the Transportation Performance Management website that you can go to for further information. Um, there's a lot of very useful information, uh, webinars, other things. Um, as they come out, this is a good site where you can go to for further. This is a pavement preservation conference, and I would uh, I wouldn't do diligence if I didn't talk much about pavement preservation, but in Map 21, there was some changes that were done when it came to pavement preservation. It talked about eligible projects, and also it included pavement preservation in the one subpart uh, section there, A4 parentheses one under construction. So there's good news. Lastly, some emergent activities that Federal Highway, myself, and others are being in involved in. And as you can see, there's been a new pavement preservation ETG. Well, I would say new. It's uh, revamped from our old one. Now we have a, a new group of people trying to spearhead this effort. Uh, next, we have an emulsion task force group that's come about uh, with a lot of different varieties. And you're going to have a speaker 
later tomorrow that's going to further talk about that. But one of the things that came out of this emulsion task force that I've been, I've been happy to be involved in is coming out with specifications when it comes to these preservations. Because currently there is no AASHTO specifications on there and we're working hard to try to get those out. Along with that are the design, the construction, and the material specs as well. We have an AASHTO TSP Square Center as what uh, Larry is a part of. We have our pavement regional partnerships and we have our research roadmap. Some additional, there's some uh, TCC pavement preservation treatments, trainings that are still free until January. If some of your staff is wanting further information and further training, I recommend going to these websites. Next, for those that don't know, we have a toolbox of different types of pavement preservation. There's 14 of them. And for those that have a smartphone, all you can do is type in FHWA and you'll get your check, uh, checklist series. And there's 14 of them. You can download one of these and you can look into it. I'll take one particular, one particular one, thin hot mix asphalt overlay. Here, when you go into it, it has a discussion on preliminary responsibilities, project operation considerations, common problems and solutions, and so forth. So there's been a lot of, a lot of work with industry, state, and feds, and so forth to come up with these, and we hope they continue. Lastly, over the past, uh, past six or eight months, I've been working on a TAC code best practices workshop around the country. And for those that haven't, haven't received it, um, I'll be coming to your neighborhoods real soon. But we've found in working with uh, the Asphalt Institute and working with state, uh, with state uh, offices, we found that TAC code has been getting very little attention. And now with us going with more thinner inner, with more thinner overlays, the importance of a TACO is very critical. And here's kind of a little bit of background on the TACO workshop itself. It includes the importance of a TACO, common TACO grades, new materials, application rates, field testing, and so forth, so forth. Here's a map I've kind of shown in the green that we have gone to. Uh, here in the red with the little black polka dots is where we're going to. And as you can see, the states of Wyoming, Colorado, and Alaska uh, that we're requesting. I think we have some dates already, but we're moving this forward. Questions? Thank you. Perfect right on time.